really work by pulling the driver into their seat, so the third and fourth passenger seat in the car, the driver in the car, and we have, in this case, uh, we've got the dual system inverters. We also use several different rear levers to adjust the vehicle's climbing power to dramatically respond equally to the the front end. This study was aiming at unsitting driver seats, where driver is hidden in the seat, you can't see them, so we're glancing into the vehicle, um, but then if the driver arm is stretched out just normal, it was built around around my dimensions, I guess, to fit in as the driver. There are obviously questions still to be asked about how we as humans will interact with these with these vehicles in particular. Um, we're very experienced in dealing with uh, with manually driven cars, for example. We know the sorts of behaviours that they exhibit. We know the sorts of interactions we might have with a with a human driver in those vehicles. But if those elements don't exist, so for example, if an autonomous vehicle drove in a different manner, different style, which you could do. Um, and if there's no human behind the wheel with whom to to make eye contact and to wave and thank and say, actually, I'm about to cross the road or have you seen me? Can't, is it safe to cross the road? Um, then, then these are sorts of questions that we need to start to investigate and start to answer sooner rather than later. And we drove the vehicle around the University of Nottingham campus over several days. Um, we tested for a different system. We were able to figure the wider range of safety that we can 